Okay, this is chapter nine, acids, bases, and salts, lesson six. It is the last lesson in the acids and bases unit, and we're going to talk about titration today. How can we use the titration equation to determine the molarity of an unknown solution? In acid-base titration, we use known information about a molarity and volume of one substance to calculate the concentration or the molarity of another unknown substance. An acid of unknown molarity is reacted with a carefully measured amount of base of known molarity to the point of neutralization. In all neutralization reactions, there must be a one-to-one -one ratio between the moles of H plus and the moles of OH minus. So in a titration, when the concentration of H plus equals the concentration of OH minus, or the moles of H plus equal the moles of OH minus. That means that you've reached the equivalence point. And this is when the titration is complete. The end point of a titration is the pH at which the solution changes color permanently. I want to make it very clear that the end point is not necessarily the equivalence point. In some cases it may be, but not usually. So what does titration look like? Well, you have a titration formula in table T that says MAVA equals MBVB, where the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid equals the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. And your volume does not have to have specific units. It can just be milliliters or liters. But we can't mix units. We can't have one in milliliters and one in liters. Just make sure that your units are the same. We use the formula when you're dealing with a titration or neutralization word problem. And here I said make sure all the units are in agreement so that they cancel out. So this is a typical titration setup. You have an, a flask with a known amount of acid in it and an indicator. And we usually use phenolphthalein for this because phenolphthalein is clear in the presence of an acid. So if I put phenolphthalein in the flask, it would be clear. And then I fill my burette with base. And then I slowly add the base a little bit at a time until my acid permanently changes color and then I can record the volume of the base that I used. I know the molarity of the base. I know the volume of the acid that was in the flask to begin with. And then I can use the formula to calculate the molarity of the acid. I'm going to show you a little video on how this is done. In a titration experiment, a solution of accurately known concentration called a standard solution is gradually added to another solution of unknown concentration until the chemical reaction between the two solutions is complete. Let's consider the titration of an unknown concentration of a hydrochloric acid HCl solution with 0.20 molar sodium hydroxide NaOH. Click on the button to begin the titration. Choose to add NaOH to HCl in 5.00 milliliter increments. Make sure to notice the change in pH and the reaction on a molecular scale. Note that hydrogen ions H plus from the acid combine with hydroxide ions OH minus from the base to produce water. Also note that as H plus is removed from solution, the pH of the solution increases. Click to add more sodium hydroxide.
this point in the titration, the acid has completely reacted with or been neutralized by the base. This point is called the equivalence point. In the titration of a strong acid with a strong base, the pH at the equivalence point is 7. Note that only sodium ions and chloride ions are present in solution. Because these ions will not affect the pH of the solution, the pH is neutral. Click to add more sodium hydroxide. Click to add one final increment of sodium hydroxide. Now let's calculate the molar concentration of the HCl solution. From the amount of base added to reach the equivalence point, you can calculate moles of base. The reaction is hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide producing water and sodium chloride. Or the net ionic equation is hydrogen ions plus hydroxide ions producing water. From the mole ratio in the reaction above, you can calculate moles of HCl. Click on the correct concentration of the HCl solution. At this point, we would use MAVA equals MBVB to solve this problem. The volume of our acid is 60 mils, as you can see right here. We don't know the molarity, so we'd have MA times 60 equals the molarity of the base, which is 0.2, and the volume of the base is 30. That's how much we added. So essentially, we have 60x equals 0.2 times 30, and when we solve, we get 0.1. So let's do a few sample problems. What is the concentration of a solution of HI if 0.3 liters? So 0.3 liters of HI, that's going to be my VA, is neutralized by 0.6 liters of 0.2 molar KOH. So this is going to be my VB, and this is going to be my MB. And it says, what is the concentration of HI? So I don't know. MA. That's what I'm trying to find. So I write my formula MAVA equals MBVB and I get X times 0 0.3 equals 0 0.2 molar times 0 0.6 and I have liters and liters so I don't have to worry about units. So in solving for X I'm just simply going to divide both sides by 0.3, 0 0.3, and these will cancel. So my x is going to be equal to 0.4 molar. So 0 0.4 molar, and this was the acid, so HI, and that's my answer. Let's look at the next one. What is the concentration of hydrochloric acid solution? So again, I don't know my MA, that's what I'm finding if 50 milliliters of 0.25 molar KOH. So this of is a linking word. It's linking these two values together and we're talking about KOH. So this is going to be my VB and this is going to be my MB, my molarity of my base, are needed to neutralize 20 mils. So that's going to be my VA and that was of the HCl. Again, using my formula MAVA equals MBVB this is going to be x times 20 equals 0 0.25 times 50. I divide both sides by 20 and I get x equal to 0 0.625 molar. I would probably round this to 0 0.63 molar and that is the HCl. Next problem, a particular acid has an H concentration of 0.1 molar. So this is some acid we don't know. So we're just going to label this um, HX. And this is our MA right here, molarity. And a volume of 100 milliliters. This is our VA. 
what volume of base so we don't know VB that's our question mark with a point one 0.5 molar concentration, so there's my MB. Again, writing my formula, MAVA equals MBVB. My molarity of my acid is 0.1. My volume is 100. I don't know the volume of my base, but I know that the molarity of my base is 0.5. So I divide both sides by 0.5. These cancel and I get X equal to 20 milliliters of the base or OH concentration because we don't know what that is. They didn't specify. And in this problem, this problem has a star because there's a type of problem that you really have to watch out for. I'm going to go back and notice that in this problem we had a monoprotic acid we had a monoprotic acid and a monohydroxy base so my H to OH was 1 to 1 here I had a monoprotic acid and a monohydroxy base my OH and my H were 1 to 1 in this problem I have H2SO4 and NaOH so my ratio of H to OH is 2 to 1. So we have to compensate for that in our problem. So if I'm using MAVA equals MBVB, let's first see what they ask us to find. We have 50 mils of 1 molar H2SO4. So this is my VA, this is my MA. What volume of 0.5 molar NaOH? So you don't know VB and you have MB right here. So let's plug in what we know. This is 1.0 molar. We know this is 50 mils. Our molarity is 0 0.5 and we don't know our base. Now we have to compensate for the one to 2 to 1 ratio of the H to OH. So your reference table doesn't tell you this. They only give you the straight formula. You have to remember if it's not one to one, number of H, number of OH. Well, we only have one OH, so we don't really have to write that, but we have two H's. So we have to put that in. So now, when we solve for X, we've got 0.5 times one, which is 0.5. So this is just gonna be divided by 0.5, and this all cancels, and it's two times one times 50, divided by 0.5. And when you solve for X, you get 200 milliliters of the NaOH that is needed to neutralize 50 mils of 1 molar H2SO4. So if your H to OH ratio is not 1 to 1, you have to remember to do this little added extra step. And I have seen the regents do that, so be prepared for that. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about is Table J, and we've talked about Table J before in previous units, so hopefully this will be a review. We talked about this when we did reactions. So according to Table J in your reference table, any metal located above H2 will react to produce H2 gas in reaction. So when you look at table J, it says which metal MgCu or Cu will react with HCl. Well, HCl contains H. So the H2 here is what they're talking about. This is representing the acid. So the metal has to be above it. So let's look at where Mg is. Mg is up here and Cu is below it. So the Cu will not react. The Mg will react with the HCl. So a general reaction is a metal 
above the acid plus acid yields hydrogen gas and some salt depending on the metal that's involved. So in this case we have Zn plus HCl. Zn is above HCl so the reaction will take place. So remember this is a single replacement reaction so Zn is positive so it's going to push out the positive. So this is Zn Cl and we have to look at our charges. Zn has a plus two charge, Cl has a minus one charge, so this is going to be Zn Cl2 after we drop and cross and hydrogen gas. And you cannot just write hydrogen, you must write H2 because H is part of Brinkelhoff and anytime we write one of those elements by themselves they form a molecule and it's written as H2, I2, F2, etc. Now let's see if our equation is balanced. It's not. We have two Cl's here. Oh, they did have a two there, two Cl's, two H's, two H's. So we're good. It's balanced. Of the four types of reactions that we've learned, this is a single replacement reaction, which we've already done these. Notice how hydrogen gas is produced. So blank, blank, and blank do not react with acids. So we've got three of those. We've got copper, silver, and gold. So copper, silver, and gold do not react with acids because they are located below H2 on table J. And those are the metals that are used for jewelry. Last thing, reactions of metals with water. Group 1 metals react vigorously with cold water. And group 2 metals, for example beryllium, has no reaction with cold water or steam. Even at red heat, even if you had that Bunsen burner turned all the way up. Magnesium only has a slight reaction with cold water and magnesium burns in steam to produce white magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas. So here, magnesium solid reacts with water to produce MgO solid and H2 gas. Calcium, strontium, and barium all react with cold water with increasing vigor to produce metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So anytime you have these group two metals, they're gonna produce, they're gonna grab the OH, so they're gonna produce XOH, so this X, is equal to the metal and hydrogen gas. The summary of the trend for group two metals. Group two metals become more reactive with water as you go down a group. Why? Because we're getting closer to francium, which is the most reactive metal on the periodic table. And that concludes this unit. I will post the review lesson later.